Singapore. Hello Indie Game fans, in this edition of Indie Gaming Around the World, let me take you on a tour of my home country of Singapore since we are celebrating National Day tomorrow. The gaming landscape is generally not very indie friendly, with MOBAs, shooters and mobile games dominating the space, where the industry here is focused on larger developers, although that may not be going so well. While there is government funding and such, societal pressures definitely do not encourage playing, let alone making games, which is why every indie game that comes out of Singapore is special to me. Developers here tend to focus on mobile, which is not what I'm about, due to the tendency for exploitative monetization. so here's a look at some premium products that I think you should pick up. Special mention does go to the upcoming Chinatown Detective Agency, which has some gorgeous pixel art renditions of futuristic cyberpunk Singapore in it, making it one to keep an eye on. Let's begin with Serious Scramblers, an arcade action title that has the tagline, No Jumping, Only Falling, making it a platformer in quotes with a delightfully retro vibe. Some light downwell vibes with this, but it is not as fleshed out, but a neat smaller game for sure. Gloom and Doom is a visual novel where you play as a slacker wraith tasked with killing a young girl, but the twist is that she believes she will bring about the end of the world and is somehow unkillable, where agents of both heaven and hell get into the mix. While I don't usually play visual novel games, I have to commend the art, which is delightfully 90s, but makes the cut in part due to the real life story behind this game. It comes to us from a solo developer, a 41 year old father of two, who made the entire game by himself from code to art, where the late nights required is certainly something that I can identify with, with the developer trying to spread the message of believing in yourself and just going with your goals, which is pretty inspirational. I like developer Spring Loaded since they always use pixel art in their games, with The Legend of Evil being a notable example of amazing visuals. It's a tower offense game where you build towers and summon demons to destroy humanity, almost like a reverse kingdom, where the variety of units in this is pretty nice. They do have quite the catalogue as well, spread across Steam, Switch and Mobile, so do look into their games for more pixel art goodness. A title that was new to me is Embark, a colony sim which released in early access in 2019, taking elements from Dwarf Fortress, Minecraft and The Sims, all mashing it into one. While this genre has increasingly been getting crowded, it's nice to see a game from a local developer in the space where the core systems are pretty neat. However, development has been slow, most likely since it's from a solo developer, where there was a gap between October 2020 and June 2021 with no updates, but based on my guesstimate of copies sold based on number of Steam reviews, seems to be doing okay and hopefully will get the momentum it needs to push through. Hello? One of the most interesting local titles is Stifle, the echo location horror mystery where sound allows you to see the environment but also attracts horrors in the dark. Most interestingly, this has optional this? VR and microphone support which makes it pretty novel, really enhancing that horror game experience. One thing to note is that this developer seems to be inactive or dissolved, with team members moving on to larger companies, which perhaps indicates the reality of indie game development here in Singapore. A promising Singaporean developer is Yong Just Yong, releasing the Arena Arcade platformer Gun Kid 99 in 2019. While it has fairly rudimentary pixel art, the almost Path of Exile style weapon modding system is one of the best parts, but if you do have any love of similar games like Super Creek Box or Muffin Knight, this will be of interest. 
there are 25 weapons, 30 abilities to mix and match, and 40 handcrafted levels, where the high score chase is one of the main driving factors, making it another great title to get. One of the first examples of a winemaking game that I came across is terroir, a French term to describe the environmental factors that affect the quality of grapes and hence the wine, including things like elevation, soil quality, irrigation, climate, and more, where you of course put in charge of a vineyard and have to craft your wines, grow your estate, and ensure that your business does not fail. If that sounds familiar, that may be because you came across 100 Days Winemaking Simulator earlier this year, but this game did release in 2017, so it has been a while. The simple but neat visuals, almost looking like Catan, does help with the chill vibes, we can get surprisingly deep into the technicalities of actual winemaking in this. Of note is that it comes to us from developer General Interactive Co, who are making Chinatown Detective Agency at the start of this video, making them a developer to watch in the space. One of the cutest and most heartwarming games of 2019 is Songbird Symphony, where you play as an adorable little bird who's trying to discover his true origins, going on a grand musical adventure in order to do so. The art and animation in this is great, simply evoking the concept of fun and whimsy, although it isn't without its more serious moments as well. While the platforming isn't the greatest in my opinion, feeling a little floaty, this is more than made up by the rhythm game elements and little musical jingles. Think of it as an adventure platformer rather than a tight, precision platformer to calibrate your expectations, but an impressive title nonetheless considering it's from a team of just 3 people. One of the pleasant discoveries in making this video is finding out that the Devolver Digital published Miro is actually from Singapore, being one of the prettiest puzzle games out there. You're guiding two characters through mazes and puzzles in order to restore their memories and colour to the world, giving me some strong Monument Valley vibes. Developer Daylight Studios is known for one particular franchise, that being the Holy Potato series, and where better to start than with Holy Potatoes A Weapon Chop from 2015. This is a time management game where you're employing workers and forging weapons to sell to heroes, having to manage cash, materials and time in order to satisfy your customers. While not the most mechanically complex title, the joys of this series is the references where the spud versions of characters like Cloud Strife, Lara Croft, Astro Boy, Batman and more feature in this, always being a delight due to the adorable character designs. Sequels of this are set in space, have you managing a spy agency and even cooking food in hell, where as of publishing, these are all 90% off for the next 5 days or so, making it a great time to pick them up.
One of the earliest Singaporean indie games to get any traction is Cube Tractor, a pixel art puzzle strategy hybrid where you're pulling cubes in order to build towers to defeat your enemies, having both reverse tower defense and bullet hell elements. Fantastic little title, where once again, the unfortunate reality of game development in Singapore strikes, with the developer all but disbanded and the members moving on to roles in places like Google, but for being a fantastic pioneer in the space, this gets a spot. Let's kick off the top 5 with one of the oldest titles on the list, Rocket Bird's Hard Boiled Chicken, a cinematic action platformer about annihilating an evil penguin empire. You play as a commando chicken, sneaking in and annihilating your enemies, where the cartoony art style certainly helps in that it has aged quite well. It's wacky and zany, in contrast with the serious military theme, making it a nice contrast which works, and I do like the double meaning of hard boil in this as well. There is a sequel to this which released in 2017, which is alright, but I would start with this for sure. A title that I almost put on my best beat em up games video is Streets of Raid Devil's Dare Deluxe, an arcade roguelite beat em up with some horror movie elements. No, it's not a scary game by any means, more of drawing upon and paying tribute to characters like Freddy Krueger, Predator, Jason and more, and somehow does also have a number of cameos of game industry figures which you may recognize. I love the sepia tones, which makes it look fantastic, but the roguelite structure does work in that there's quite a number of levels as well as in-run upgrades. It's definitely on the hidden gem end of things, so pick this up if you have not. You talk about the war ending. There's only one end to this war. We must learn the secrets of the Masquerines. Something is happening. Something that we cannot see. That is on a level beyond us. It frightens me to wonder what it might be. One of the most impressive indies out of Singapore is the tactical CRPG Masquerada Songs and Shadows, an epic fantasy adventure set in a renaissance-inspired city. Where Venetian-style masks grant the wearers the power of elemental magic, it's in this world where our tale is set, in a politically charged environment where the elemental magic has created inequality between its wielders and the lower classes, and you play as a detective summoned back to the city in order to investigate a mysterious kidnapping. I love the look of this game, where the real time with pause combat is on par with the greets in the genre, combined with the unique setting makes it of interest. Unfortunately, this developer seems to have been dissolved as well, making it another one that bit the dust. Welcome back to Umber, my friend. Perhaps the poster boy for indie games in Singapore right now is developer The Gentle Bros, a three-person team behind the tremendously successful Cat Quest series, we are looking at the second entry here. It's a wonderful action-adventure RPG starring our favorite furry friends going on a grand cat venture across a fantasy world. Things are firing on all cylinders for this team, putting out some great sales figures due to the quality of their games, so the future does look bright, at least for this team. Perhaps the best kept secret in Singapore is the roguelite deck builder RPG Guardian Quest, a title that's currently in early access but has gathered a tremendous amount of steam in the process. 
gather a party of heroes and go on a quest to unravel ancient curses, battling foes both human and supernatural in the process. There is positional combat, like Darkest Dungeon, although it's an expanded version of that, not being limited to just a horizontal row, but with an entire grid in place. Each character has their own deck, with additional systems like equipment, leveling, a skill tree and more, making it quite the feature-packed entry. Early access has been smooth, with new heroes, story chapters and modes being added, so I'm excited to see how this turns out when done, taking the number one spot. I hope you enjoyed the look at indie games from Singapore, and if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and suggest where we should go next on our trip around the world. Another special mention goes to developer Springloaded for making the pixel art tycoon game Let's Build a Zoo, introducing some changes to the formula which makes it very interesting and is a title to watch. For more roguelite indie games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.